Hello to our viewers in New Zealand and around the world. We're tracking a subtropical low coming into New Zealand and the latest on Hurricane Dorian. Let's kick off with the subtropical system to our north and it is deepening and the winds are picking up. The squash zone is in here between the deepening low and the large high that still remains over two thirds of New Zealand. A warmer than average Tuesday on the way by several degrees especially in the south. And in the north, the winds pick up, they become blustery. I'd say uh, the eastern Waikato, my hometown of Te Aroha, one of the areas likely to be a little bit blustery today uh, as those winds come over the Kaimai and Coromandel Ranges. Otherwise, I think really the rain is the main feature with this system coming through. So temperatures today, as I say, they are above average unless you're sort of directly in that wind coming straight off the sea, like Bay of Plenty, and even really these northern areas, you're only about a degree above average. But further south, definitely much warmer than it should be for this time of the year. We've been seeing this pattern quite a bit over the last week or so. We do have a colder change coming later this week though, we'll talk about that in a moment. So these are the strongest winds for this evening uh, coming through. This is around about um, one o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So overnight, midnight tonight, blustery winds in this zone here. So that's what I meant by uh, the eastern Waikato, usually a little bit of a wind tunnel for a nor'easter. Otherwise, just a bit blustery, most other places, nothing, uh, nothing too major. So this is how Wednesday sets up. Those winds move further out to sea. That is all the subtropical side of it. So that means warmer weather continues down across New Zealand on Wednesday, even though it will be cloudier and wetter. So the rain continues. It eases up in the north here, but the center of the low itself does start to come in. The winds ease right back though, still a nor'easter, still a warm day for you on Wednesday. On Thursday, we start to get the change. So the center of that low, very slow moving, and now it's being stretched like that across the country, right down. So you'll see more rain and or showers, depending on exactly where you are. That warm subtropical windy weather right out over the top of the Chatham Islands. On the other side, we have a colder southerly arriving. So our map for Friday shows a colder change. Friday's a colder day, right across the country by the end of the night uh, for some places, but in the south, definitely a colder one with those southerlies coming through. Typical spring weather, and the low itself moving away with the subtropical winds moving away. So it does get colder on Saturday, like I say, maybe not till nighttime for some in the north, but it is very short-lived because we get to Saturday, and while the cold air still remains, the winds and the cloud and the rain does start to clear away. So you might find a few showers linger in here, but generally speaking, conditions improve later on. And then here comes our next low. And guess what? This side here, subtropical again. So our final map for Sunday shows subtropical winds once again coming back to New Zealand, warming things back up. It might still be a bit cold down here in the lower South Island. That wind's going to take a bit of time to get down and warm you up. And in fact, if you look at the isobars, these ones are a little bit colder down here still. So a wintry weekend on the way for the South Island, but things warm back up, bounce back to warmer than average. Okay, let's go to the Northern Hemisphere now. Hurricane Dorian at the time of this update was category four. Now the good news is the latest tracking shows it's starting to turn to the north. It might just miss Florida, but it's very close. So they could have some pretty major damage going up the side of the coastline as the storm is expected to run parallel to it. You can see the tracking here, thanks to CNN, and they are using both GFS and ECMWF, just like we do. So you can see that tracking. How close is that? I mean, we're talking just a few kilometers really offshore, 100 k's or so offshore from those damaging winds. We get this in New Zealand quite a lot. Those big storms come down and they fall just off our coastline, but the difference here is we don't get storms as big as this one. So this is a huge storm, but it does seem to be running parallel to the coastline. Now that could cause problems all the way up that coastline across three or four states, but it might also mean that we don't quite see the same catastrophic, da catastrophic damage from a direct landfall. Now, if you want to track it, you just go to our website, weatherwatch.co.nz. That's the main story at the top there, or at least it'll be somewhere in the top, and you can see all the different maps CNN have got and exactly where it is, how strong it is, all those questions you just might have because sometimes it does get very confusing. That's all from me. We'll update you again on Wednesday with the latest for New Zealand and maybe the latest as well as we track Hurricane Dorian.